Good morning, Caitlin. This is your Uncle Richard. It is Monday, April 9th, and we are on Psalm 19. So let's get to it. The heavens declare the glory of God. The skies proclaim the work of his hands. Day after day, they pour forth speech. Night after night, they reveal knowledge. They have no speech. They use no words. No voice is heard from them. Yet, their voice goes out into all the earth. Their words to the ends of of the world. Well, let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you for this day. And Father, I pray for uh, your Holy Spirit to give me wisdom to rightly divide your word. And for anyone who is watching, that they would, uh, that your Holy Spirit would open hearts and minds to receive what your word has to say to them. And we ask this all in the name of your Son, the one and only true Son of God, Jesus Christ. Amen. Okay, Caitlin. Um, I was thinking of on this. One of the most foolish things a person can say is there is no God. Now that's going to be extremely offensive to people. But it's, it's foolish to say. Now why is that foolish? It's because if you say there is no God, you're basically saying there is no God but me. Because only a God could say there is no God. Because you would, to say there is no God, you would have to say, I have searched all of the universe, both the smallest bits to the, to the largest places. And I have found in my extensive study, I mean my exhaustive study, I mean I have studied every single thing in this universe, and I have found there to be no God. So, to say there is no God, I mean only God could do that. <laughs> you're basically declaring yourself a God. So we know there is a God. That's settled. The real question, the question that's life-changing is who is God? And so um, let me get back, pedal just a little bit. Because God has put his fingerprint on everything. The heavens declare the glory of God. So when you look up in the sky, when I look up in the sky, it's screaming, someone made this, someone made this. There is order and beauty and reason and ration and rationale and, and it, it's glorious. Then, uh, and they do this day after day. Every sunrise that you see is like, hey, I'm God, I've made this. And night after night, they don't have any speech, but they their voice goes out into all the earth. And actually, I would say their voice is like shouting to everyone. And, and so it's there. All you have to do is look. And, and you don't even have to look in the sky. I, I, just look down and, and see your hands. <laughs> look at your hand. You're breathing. We, I was talking about the, sharing this with uh, uh, my fellow elders at church yesterday about and, and uh, Duane was, was saying on, you know, praying, people pray for miracles all the time. Well, do you, do you realize that it's a miracle every time you breathe? I mean, every time the sun comes up, that's a miracle. I mean, why didn't the planet, why didn't the, the solar system we have, why didn't like Jupiter suddenly run into another planet? Why didn't this huge asteroid or something, you know, why didn't it destroy? Why didn't the sun just go out? You know, why didn't the sun just burn out? I mean, every time the sun rises, that, that's a that's a miracle. Every every time you breathe, that's a miracle. Why am I still breathing? <laughs> you know, I don't I don't control it. My heart's beating. I mean, miracles, I, it's like every day. And then <laughs> another miracle is to even be able to ask, who is God? You know, animals don't think this. As great as dogs are, I really enjoy them. I you know, animals. It, it, but I mean, you don't have a dog wondering. What's the greater purpose of this? You know, why was I put here? Hmm. Is it just this dog dish? <laughs> they, don't, they, don't ask, they don't think that way, but we do. And we were given this by my God. Now, since we've established that, the big question is, who is God? Because, see, God is an exclusive title. There can only be one God. There can't be many. If there are many gods, then they're not gods at all, because there can only be one true God. That's the definition of, of who God is or it, there can only be one. So we look and we see 
and and that's where Psalm 19 is telling you about who this God is and I'll let you look deeper into that but but what I want to say today is it's more it's so much more than just believing there is a God hello that is the obvious thing <laughs> even even uh, Satan himself knows there is a God okay the the devil and his angels or demons whatever you want to call them the, the lying spirits they know there's a God they know it they're for, fully aware they even know there's Jesus and, and they even know that Jesus rose from the dead. They, they know all this. So just because you know that, I mean, congratulations, big pat on the back. I mean, that's the obvious stuff. It's who is this God? Because there can only be one. And if you don't, if, if a person doesn't get that right as to who is this God, I mean, nothing else matters. Then when, when we, uh, establish who is this God, then it is how. <laughs> how will I be with him? You know, where am I with him? Then there come some really great questions. And Jesus said it himself. He said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but through me. And and so it's you a person cannot bring themselves to God. We can't do enough good things. We can't do enough religious things. And there's so many things people do to try to get comfort in that. Say, well, I did this. I went to this class. I did this church. I had this thing. You know, they, they dumped water on me or they did all this stuff. And, and I'm not trying to offend anybody, but there's nothing in the Bible that says that saves you. The only thing that saves you is confessing with your mouth, Jesus is Lord. Believing in your heart that God raised him from the dead. It is faith in Christ that saves us realizing there's nothing we can do. And so with Psalm 19, basically what Psalm 19 is saying, hey, you don't have any excuse. You have no excuse. You look up in the sky and you see me calling out. And, and so it's everywhere. Even if you didn't have a Bible, <laughs> you could see, hey, there's something going on here. Why is this world working? Why am I still alive? Why am I breathing? <clears throat> and so that is is what I want to leave with you in this Psalm 19. I've just touched the very uh, first few verses of this Catalan. But in your in your time, see the the faith uh, in Christ is a personal thing. So I can't do it for you. Each person has this relationship. Now, I can steer people. I, you know, I talk to Zach. I talk to my boys, Alex, Evan, Dexter. You know, I can steer people. But the 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 one true God, he he works on an individual, on an individual basis. And then what he does is uh, through Christ, you become his child. You're adopted. So he, it it's like a father to daughter, father to son relationship and that is that is something he has chosen that that's the way he works you can't you don't go through anybody else you go through Christ and then you are either his child or you're not his child I mean that, that so if you are his child he's going to work with you one-on-one -on -one. doesn't mean we don't go to church of course you go to church of course you talk to other Christians <laughs> but that that ultimate question you know who is God and how how do I be with him? Where am I with him? And that's settled on your own. Well, I hope that uh, has given you encouragement, Caitlin. And it was great to see you uh, at uh, during the Easter holiday. Rachel had so much fun with you. And uh, I'm so glad that you're making it. You know, you're making it. Each day is a victory. Each day is a victory. And... Um, We'll continue to pray over you. And for anyone else who happens to be watching this video, well, you didn't happen to be watching this video. <laughs> there are no accidents with the Lord. I, if you're watching this video and you're not Caitlin right now, the, the Lord ha wants you to see this. And so 
I'm just I'm just the messenger pointing you to Psalm 19. But if you don't know Jesus, if you haven't settled these very, very important questions, you need to call on him while there's time. You need to go to Romans 10, 9, 10. You need to go to Romans 3, 23. You need to go to Psalm 19. You need to get this settled. And, and Jesus said, for those who seek me, they will find me. So, you, you know, the... The God of this universe wants to be known. He wants to be known. But it's only through Jesus. It's only through Christ. It's only through the shed blood on the cross. And it's his resurrection from the dead. See, the reason you, you have to believe that God raised him from the dead is because no one else has done that. And since Jesus was raised from the dead, it validated everything he said that he was the son of God. Everything he said then in the New Testament or in, in the Gospels, was validated by his resurrection from the dead. It isn't enough that he was crucified. Yes, he was, and that paid the penalty. But the validation came in the resurrection, and on that hangs everything. If there is no resurrection, then this is all a joke. Then we better start searching for the real God. Because <laughs> if, if there was no resurrection, it's not him. Then we better go looking somewhere else. But if there is a resurrection, which there is, there is, he rose from the dead. That put the stamp on it and said, yes, this was the Son of God. This is the Son of God. He is, he was, he is to come. So if that's you, do something about it. The Lord's talking to you. And it's not me. <laughs> Believe me, my Lord. But he's talking to you through his spirit and through his word. Well, Caitlin, uh, I say uh a lot, but that's okay. I I wish you uh, wish you well, and I look forward to hearing what the Lord's doing through this storm, through this season that you're in, and uh, and how He's going to grow you in the knowledge of Him. Amen.